check it out. The world won't understand you. Hey, but it's okay. Say the world won't understand you. Cause I made you in my own way. Say the world won't understand you. Cause I made you different apart from everyone. They won't understand you. Cause I made you special, my son. Yeah, my son. My I son. walked with God, with giants wrong. I know you wouldn't understand it, but check it. Now they see my home. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 88 of In a Good Way podcast. Today's very special guest is Linda Quayley. I said it right, right? You did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, perfect. Linda is a Los Angeles based mixed media artist and a spiritual seeker. She works in acrylic and fine paper art or art paper on clayboard in her vibrant, mystical paintings and with cultured pearls and mixed metals in her simple, elegant jewelry designs. Uh, she's also a certified pearl specialist, which I wasn't aware of till today. <laughs> so that's amazing. And she's also a certified gemologist. So we'll definitely ask Linda about that. And also her paintings have been in movies and TV shows like La La Land, NCIS Los Angeles, Going Under, New Girl, Reverie, Lethal Weapon, 10 Days in the Valley, Livy and Malcolm, Training Day. So I want to hear about that. Criminal Minds and <laughs> Lucifer and Big Little Lies, which I watched. Um, Was it? Two seasons or just one? I forgot how many. Books. I think it was two seasons. Yeah, I think yeah, I was yeah. in second season. Absolutely. So, yeah, no, that's quite a, I mean, you know, understanding being an artist, right? Like me doing music, I know how great that must have felt to be like, whoa, like there's my painting in a TV show and movie and all that good stuff. So, I mean, we could, we could talk about, I don't want to jump way too, too far ahead. <laughs> I, I always like to start in the beginning. Um. You know, I guess for you, you feel that your spiritual awakening came a little later, right? Yep. But were you already feeling things when you were younger or that you you could share with us something that you were already noticing when you were little? So I really had to think about that question because I know you like to ask that question first. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing that really came up for me was... Um, as a child, I was very moody, oh. sensitive, and uh, I'm a cancer, and I'm very true to my sign, very moody, very sensitive. I was really attracted to water from a very young age. My grandparents lived on a lake, and that was my happy place. I wanted to go there all the time. I always begged my dad for a swimming pool because we grew up in the Midwest, and he always told me no. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was I always felt that very strong connection to the water. Um, the other thing that I I remember about myself growing up as a young child was I used to talk to myself all the time. I still do, <laughs> but I you know how they always say, like, oh, if you talk to yourself, that's okay as long as you don't answer yourself. But I did. I remember like having full blown conversations with myself in the mirror a lot. Like I would just go in the bathroom, close the door and I'd be in the, I'd just be talking away to myself in the mirror. Mm. And now later when I think about that, I think, I don't know, maybe that was Claire audience in some form, because I really believe that the channeling that we'll talk about with the paintings is a form for me, it was a form of Claire audience. So it could have been that, but I never like thought I was hearing at that time. I never really thought I was hearing an, another voice. It was kind of like all my own dialogue that I was saying out loud. And then the other thing that I thought of was as a child, I was very afraid at night. I was always like pulling the covers up like this. For years, I would be afraid at night. I, I had my own room or if I would sleep somewhere else, if I was at my grandparents' house, you know, at the lake, whatever, I was always like this. 
and it's not like I saw anything in the room. Like, you know, so many of your guests talk about how people are standing at the foot of the bed or whatever. <laughs> that was not my experience. Yet I felt like um, there, I felt afraid that something was there. Wow. No, no. I'm, I mean, there probably was. And are you like do you know of your birth chart or not really like do you know yeah you yeah i've had my astral chart done yeah do you have any gemini in there or no no i don't no? think so mm -mm, mm -mm. i'm a i'm a cancer sun a sagittarius rising a pisces moon oh. and my north node is in scorpio mm. but it, if you i have a lot of uh things in the eighth house and the eighth house I know is the house of mystery. Mm. And uh, so I don't know, maybe that that something. Also, I was always really afraid of the basement. I know that. But I think a lot of little kids are afraid of the basement. But our basement was fixed up. And I I just had bad dreams about the basement. Like all growing up, I felt like there was a lot of like... Uh, negative energy down there and so i was also very sensitive to that so again like you know sensitivity like clairsentience i think probably clairaudience clairsentience were the things that maybe i was feeling as a kid but i didn't know what that was when i had my chart done and they told me i, I was a virgo moon i was like what i don't understand that at all but i think i understand it now more about bringing structure it's about like in this time of my life, bringing structure to um, what's been happening to me. Like, I think part of like coming on your podcast is part of that. It's like putting a voice to what's been going on for me. No, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, Virgos are ruled by Mercury, just like Gemini. So maybe that helps you like the communication, right? Like it's all around. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. right. So I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I have a lot of friends. I've interviewed so many Virgos, so I I've never really asked them, like, hey, do you talk to yourself or uh, anything like that? Right? But, okay. Where but, does that come from? Now I, I want to know. know. Yeah. Yeah. No, but, um, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, we, we could stay on that subject forever. <laughs> but, um, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll continue then. So when you were little, that's what you noticed. And then yeah. uh, what age did you start painting? I started painting in my late 20s. When I moved to Los Angeles, I... Um, I had to get a job. So I ended up getting when I got here because that's what we do, right? So I had to get a job. So I got a job working um, in an office and I started studying art at night. So when I was a kid, I, I would always create with my hands, but, but not drawing and painting. Mm -hmm. I started studying painting when I was in my late 20s at Otis, in, at, which was uh, across from MacArthur Park at that time in downtown LA or oh. close to downtown LA. Mm. Yeah. And so I noticed right away, I, I knew I wanted to be in something creative. And so I thought, oh, I want to be an interior designer. I'm going to take an interior design class. And I started taking it. And the first thing I had to do was buy like a drafting board and a T-square and I thought, oh, my God, I'm not going to like this at all. Are you kidding? And so I took the class, but then I was like, well, now I don't want to be an interior designer because because that's not my thing, you know. And then I took a drawing class and a painting class. And that's when I knew that I wanted to be a painter. Wow. And so I started uh, painting while I was still working full-time which was my story for 25 years actually working oh, wow. full-time in an office yeah so this whole time that you were painting you were also working full-time in a job that I hated oh, so this is another reason why I really want to start talking more about that I mean the people who know me know that but I feel like I can really um, maybe be an inspiration to people who are working in a job that they don't like because when you work in a job that you don't like um that's in an office they they give you a lot of fear about oh you can't leave this job because you're what about your benefits what about your health insurance you know and they scare people into thinking that they can never try to do anything 
that's more creative because, oh no, you can't make a living doing that. And you know, something bad will happen. And so, um, I mean, I, I raised children during that time and I had a lot of responsibilities and things I needed to pay for, but I was always too afraid to try to make a shift mm. during that time. And it's so important when I meet young people now who are artists, it's so important to be able to listen to that voice and follow that that um, intuition that you have about doing art. Because if you don't, and you know, because you're a songwriter, if you don't do your art, it like eats you up from the inside. Absolutely. Like, um, I respected it in that way. But no, right now when you were saying that, I was smiling because word for word, like verbatim, that's what they told me when I was leaving my job of nine years, right? It was like, oh, are, are you sure you're in it? What about your benefits? <laughs> like, exactly. And it was funny because they gave me up yeah. to a year to go back, right? I had left my that job of nine years. I, I was miserable. If I, it would be like in that job, it would be a miracle if I had a good day, right? Where I was like, oh, today was a good day. It was usually <laughs> like, it, yeah, it was expected to be like, you know, everything's just boom, 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 right? Fast pace. And, you know, it was yeah. more like, um, well, after, right? At the end, I was in management, but it was still like, yeah, it was just horrible, right? And then uh, I was miserable. So they gave me up to a year to come back. And then after I had left and I was trying to do the music, right? I had some of my 401k money. I put together this really good album, everything. But, but you know, I don't know. I was trying to like, you know, like you always, oh, okay, boom, this is going to, hit or something right and then um yeah. so but the quality was there the product was good right i made this i put together this good album but then the year was coming up and it was like well i need to uh yeah I, i'm gonna need to go back to some i have to find some kind of work right and then yeah one of my friends was doing comedy and, and i'll just try to wrap it because i don't want to make this but one of my friends was trying to do um not trying to he was doing comedy right so I want to show him support, you know, as a fellow artist, like, okay, let me go show him support. And we got, you know, he did it said, and then we watched the whole thing. And then at the end, there was a surprise guest and no one knew was there, but it was George Lopez, you know, the comedian George Lopez. Yeah. So he comes running on stage. Oh, and the act right before him, I guess he was George Lopez's friend or something. And he's like, oh, people never believe me when I tell them I open up for George Lopez. And then here comes George Lopez running out, you know, and it was like, oh, what? <laughs> And he was just about to start going on tours until he was trying out jokes. We were his guinea pigs for that night, right? So he was trying out some jokes. And uh, it was funny. I was so happy to see him. Like, he even tried saying jokes at me and because I was sitting right in the front. And, I, like, <laughs> I was laughing. Everything he was saying about me, I was laughing. So he stopped. He was like, oh, shoot, this isn't working, you know? Because <laughs> I was just, like, excited. I was like, oh, wow, George Lopez, you know? And so yeah. anyways, after the thing was done, we went to a bar it was already like 10 something and then we went to a bar and you know the whole night like uh we were there like from like 10 to 2 in the morning but he shared a personal story and it was so exactly like mine right the same they told him that he was working in some warehouse job and he was like oh uh are you sure what about your benefits what about that i was like what and i was about to throw throw in the towel I was like damn my year's coming up if I don't go back, then I'm screwed. What am I going to do for money? And then he said about that. And he's all, he's all 20 years later, here I am. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, it went good for him, you know? And then, like, a month after that, I started doing the acting, too. And I worked with him. And I was like, hey, I just want to tell you thank you. Yeah, I want to tell you thank you. You told me this one thing. Uh, I don't know if you remember this comedy show. He's oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. And then I was like, yeah, you told me this thing. And, like, Bam, like he was like my little guiding spirit guide, like at that moment, like at yeah. that, right when I was going to throw in the towel, like, boom, if it wasn't for him and then that, right. I've been doing the acting for like nine years now, I think, you know what I mean? So, yeah. See, isn't that great? The way, like when you're ready, that little bit of inspiration comes along that keeps you going. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I'll try not to talk for the rest of the, <laughs> of the thing, aside from the questions I asked, but I just had to share that because. When you said yeah. that, I was like, oh, wow. It's really like a script. Like, they tell you the same thing. <laughs> like, what about and your it, benefits? What about your... Right. And and oftentimes that comes from the people that you work with, too, because 
they're afraid too. You know, like they're afraid. So they want to keep you there in their scaredness. Yeah. And so it takes a lot of courage to step out of it and try something different. It really does. Absolutely. And he said the same thing. All his coworkers, I think everybody was telling them like, you're crazy. Yeah. Like, what are you going to do? So that's all I needed to hear. And that was enough for me. Um, yeah. And so after he told me that, I was like, right, I got to find something to do. And then by some miracle, there was a guy at a studio. I, w- I was recording a song and I had seen him on, on a movie. I had seen him. I was like, oh, wow. So I asked him and he sent me in the right direction and I did it. And boom, I, I never looked back after that. Right. So, so I was just thankful. But yeah. So after that, so you never left then, right? So you actually stayed, you stayed in. I the- stayed in, I stayed in that job until uh, 2012. When both my kids were through high school and in college, as soon as that happened, I quit my full-time job, put everything in storage, traveled in Mexico. I moved out of my apartment, put everything in storage, traveled in Mexico for four months. By yourself? And then when I came back, I started uh, doing events every weekend, selling prints of my work and jewelry. So I, I learned the jewelry business. And I started to make jewelry and do events every weekend. And that's how I supported myself. Wow. And then a friend of mine told me about this place that rents uh, paintings to movies and TV. And that's how I ended up getting my paintings in some of those uh, shows. Because I started to I started with a big series of paintings about the water, obviously. Because I could never have a swimming pool as a kid. When we came to LA, there was a swimming pool where I lived. And so the kids, I, the kids would go swimming in the water and we'd take pictures of the kids in the water. And then later I made that into a series of paintings. And I loved the water at that time. And I think that was like, uh, when the kids were little, that was like my first form of meditation was being underwater because the kids were having fun because they were in the water. I was underwater where it was quiet and orderly and calm, and I could hear myself think, you know? Mm -hmm. So that first series of paintings that I did was a reflection of that. I called them things like uh, beneath the surface, Mm -hmm. going deeper, um, head above water, just keep swimming (laughs) (laughs) and they were like metaphors for life at that time you know and because they were big and colorful um they became popular to be rented and so my biggest painting which you saw which was one of the only abstract paintings i've ever done um ended up in 15 different shows including big little lies where um there was a scene where Nicole Kidman was standing in front of my painting, yelling at Meryl Streep. And it was such a moment for me. <laughs> it was really, it was great. Wow. So yeah, that was very exciting. And I also did have a, a painting, one of my pool paintings in La La Land. And I didn't know it was in the movie because when it was rented and I got paid for the rental, um, it didn't have the name of the production company or the movie on the the stubs. So I didn't know who rented the painting. I just knew someone rented it. And it was much later, like a year after the movie came out, I saw the movie once, never noticed. And then like a year later, I was sitting by myself in a friend's living room and I'm watching the movie. And all of a sudden I go, I think that's my painting. So I stopped it and I backed it up. And I, you know, like I went frame by frame and I was like, oh my God, that's my painting. My paintings in La La Land. And that made me so happy. That was such a moment for me because I love Los Angeles. Mm. I love the swimming pool. And I did that pool painting kind of in the style of David Hockney, who is one of my favorite painters. And then it ended up in this like award-winning movie. And it, as an artist, it's just like one of those moments where you just go, ah, that felt good. Absolutely. No, no, it's almost like, like in that moment, you feel like you made it, right? Like there's just something. Yeah. 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 That felt really great. So then um, after that, 
it wasn't, I want to kind of fast forward to 2020 because in 2020, during the pandemic, I had a spiritual awakening Okay. and I was, um, I started out the pandemic here in Los Angeles and I, and of course everything was shut down. So I couldn't do any events and it gave me like a rare opportunity to just focus on painting. That was it. Mm. And so in the first few months of the pandemic, I did two paintings. I painted one of myself that I later figured out was me painting my higher self. And then the second one I did was a merman and I discovered later that he's my protector. So the pandemic starts with me painting my higher self and my protector. I'm in a situation where I'm facing, like getting triggered a lot and facing a lot of um, my, realizing I have to do a lot of shadow work on myself. And I feel called to go to the desert, which mm. is pretty wild because I'm a water sign and I love water and I paint water, but, and I couldn't really even understand why, but I felt very called to go to the desert. So again, because it was the pandemic, I, it was like a rare opportunity to just go somewhere and stay where usually all the snowbirds go, but they're not going mm. because it's the pandemic. The Canadian people can't fly because there's flight restrictions. The people in the US are afraid to go. Nobody's going. So I was able to stay in um, Airbnbs in Arizona and Palm Springs mm. for like nine months. Oh, wow. I, yeah, I know I was counting the months before it's podcast and I went, I was gone nine months. And during that time, um, I was able to stay in a nice place for um, an affordable rate where normally there would be other people there, but they couldn't come. And it was just like a, it was like a window opened up for me mm. where I, where I could just step into a different place and be alone. Yeah. And so during that time, I started meditating and I had kind of like poked a stick at meditation before, but, but no, I didn't have a regular practice. And during that time, I right away, as soon as I, the first place I went was Tucson. Right after I got there, I started meditating and I was, I was uh, doing a workshop online with a woman who was, who was leading a workshop about answering like the bigger questions in life, like who am I and why am I here and what's my purpose and, and what does happiness look like and what are my, you know, issues and all those things that we look at during a spiritual awakening. Mm. And, and so um, I started meditating. I meditated. It, I started with 15 minutes, but like within like a week, I swear, I was meditating 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the evening. And when I started to do that, all kinds of things started to happen. Like at first, when I first started meditating, I would I liked to meditate to the sunrise mm. in my room, but I could see the sunrise and the colors. When I would meditate, I would start getting these like big swirls of like magenta and orange and all these colors. And I thought, wow, this is incredible. So of course I Googled it. Do you see colors in meditation? <laughs> you know? Yeah. I was like, wow, that's a trip. And then a few weeks in, I, I had something happen in meditation where I got this huge surge of energy that started in the ground and came up through my legs and literally like made me arch my back. It was so powerful that it scared me. And I was like, I thought, am I like being possessed? <laughs> What's that? So then I went online again and I'm Googling, oh my God, I felt all this energy. What is this? And I, I don't know if it was like uh, Kundalini rising or, you know, exactly what was happening there, but I started to feel energetic surges in my body. Then I started to experiment with a pendulum 
because I had met someone um, at a psychic fair, mm. um, maybe like a, a year before that, who had showed me, had used a pendulum when we were trying to figure out what kind of stone something was. And I like, I couldn't believe it. Like she held a pendulum over the stone and, and it was purple jade. We thought it was maybe jade. So we asked the this pendulum, uh, we held the pendulum over the, the stone and she asked the stone like, or she asked the pendulum, please show me yes. And it like swung a certain way. Wow. And then she asked it, please show me no. And it swung a different way. Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't believe my eyes. I was like, what? that is unbelievable to me and so she asked it like is it jade and it said no is it you know amethyst it said yes and then she's like are you sure and she asked it again and she said here you go it's amethyst and i thought whoa that's wow. unbelievable so then fast forward i'm in the desert i'm having my spiritual awakening i'm like I wonder if that can happen for me. So I take off my necklace, this one, and I hold it up and I ask it a question and it answers me. Like I ask it to show me yes and I ask it to show me no, and it does. Wow. So yeah, that was that was uh, incredible. So then of course I went on YouTube, my favorite place to go to ask questions <laughs> and I started to watch um videos about how to use a pendulum and how to understand you know what what you could be channeling and so that was kind of my first experience with channeling something that I was aware of mm. and that those kinds of experiences just kind of led me to the the next thing like I I listened to someone and they mentioned the Akashic Records and I was like, the Akashic Records, what's that? Let me look it up. And I did. And then I read the book by Linda Howe, who's like the Akashic Records, you know, uh, she has like a PhD in Akashic Records, you know, she, she's, yeah, she's really the foremost authority on that subject. So I read her book on how to read your own Akashic Records. And then I did. I started to read my own Akashic records during that time. And it all started to come through in my painting. Mm. So I discovered that my, when I sat down to do my painting, that if I could step aside a bit, and open my mind, something was coming through me that was helping me paint the painting. Mm. And in that moment, like in those moments when that really started to happen for me, I understood like, how does someone write a screenplay? Or how does someone write a concerto? Or how does some person get up on stage in front of you know 20,000 people and open their mouth and this amazing thing comes out how does that happen and I believe that it happens because of the ability to step aside and channel from a source greater than us hmm. yeah I mean yeah I mean, I don't know how to how if half of it is um I mean there's so many variables, right? Like it could be what if it is something that uh that was learned in another life and it's like continuing in this one, right? Because we already have the knowledge or like when my uncle yeah. when my uncle uh he, you know because he lives in Mexico and everything with my aunt and um when they saw I was doing music, he he said, "Oh, we we you have like uh composers in the bloodline," and I I didn't know I don't know who they were, so I was like, "Oh wow," so you know, but he, yeah, like so he was like, "Oh yeah, oh you you probably got it from there or something like that," like it was already somewhere, you know, just waiting for someone to pick it up, like hey, you know, it's this is already in there, right? Like the information and and the little DNA strands or something that someone has to pick it up. But the same, I always felt like that. Like I definitely felt like when I would be writing songs, especially the ones that came out so quickly, it would feel channeled, right? Like, okay, where did that come from? Like, that's, that's impossible. Like that was just too easy to, you know, 
something like that. Like it would almost feel like, like it should have been harder, right? Something like that. So with your paintings, right? Even before you started feeling like you were channeling, like now going back, do you feel like you were even channeling then, or what? What? Like what was the? I felt like it was so when I started painting my series of mermaids, I. I had stepped to when I quit my job and started traveling in Mexico and came back, I didn't paint for a year because I felt like the paintings that I did of the swimming pool were things that I was painting that I already saw. And they were all about my conscious mind. Like, okay, I see this person underwater and I'm going to make a representation of what I see. And even though it's an artistic, you know, like rendering, it's not the, exactly the same as a photograph. I still felt like, okay, this is already in a photograph. I can take a picture of this and here it is. And for me personally, that wasn't what I wanted to be doing with my art. I lost interest in it because for me personally, I felt like if, if I can take a photo of it and it's already there, I don't need to represent that again. It's already there. And so I didn't want to paint. And I started doing, when I was traveling, I did photography. I enjoyed that. I, I stepped away from the painting. And then um, like a year later, I was missing it. And I thought, if I paint again, I'm going to paint something that comes from my imagination wow. instead of from, so like from my subconscious, instead of from my conscious mind mind and that for me personally that's what was missing in my link to art and so when I started to do that I thought I'm gonna paint mermaids mm -hmm. because I found that when I was uh, going to jewelry shows looking for materials for my jewelry I would be attracted to mermaids like say I saw a piece a carved piece of a mermaid oh I want to have that oh I, it seemed like they were calling me so I thought, I'm going to paint them. So I did my first piece, and I noticed from the start that something would inspire me, like I would see a face that inspired me or an idea. And then just I would start with just that face, and then the painting would create itself. It would tell me a story as I painted it, and the elements, I would add the elements as I went. So it wasn't like I sketched out this thing and okay, here's the sketch and now I'm going to paint it. It wasn't like that. It was like, it started with the idea of a person and then around that idea, the painting told me the story and it was like, they talked to me and they told me, like I painted um, the second painting I did, I called her Spring Mermaid. And I knew that I wanted to put a vintage mermaid in a vintage bathtub. So I found like a, a face of, from a vintage postcard that I liked and I found a bathtub that I liked and I thought, I'm going to take this lady and I'm going to put her in the bathtub. So I did. And then I thought, oh, it looks like the spring. Maybe there might be a bird that comes and lands on her finger. And so I started to paint the bird. And then I thought, oh, maybe there might be a cat down below and he's watching the bird. And then all of a sudden a mouse appears around the corner who's going to watch the cat who's watching the bird and it kind of like evolved like that like they told me what they wanted and then I just did it that's amazing right so that was the first couple I did two that were mermaids in the bathtub and then the third painting that I did is Ophelia I don't know if you can even see her but she's back here and she was my um, third mermaid that I did. And that was the first time that she told me her name. Oh, While wow. I was painting her, she told me, my name is Ophelia. And so I thought, well, that's really interesting. Okay. Did you ever so I named her up, Ophelia. Did you ever look up why Ophelia? I did. So I did look up Ophelia. I think I wrote it down here. Um, but it was something like, uh, oh, here. It was something like uh, she she could either be your best friend or the, oh, here. The name Ophelia. She could be the death of you or the making of you. You won't know until you get to know her. Oh, wow. 
That's a man. I love it. No, that's beautiful. <laughs> right? Beautiful, yeah. Wow. So then after I painted Ophelia, I painted uh, another um, mermaid that was out in the middle of the ocean, floating in an inner tube, playing a ukulele to the moon. Mm. And I also am very, very drawn to the moon. And again, I think that's like a cancer thing about um uh I'm being a moon child I always say I'm a moon scientist because I'm always like oh which phase is the moon when's the full moon so anyway she's singing a song of love to the moon and she's naked mm. and before that I, I usually do paint my mermaids nude and I'll talk about that in a minute but usually they wear pearls because mm. I'm also all about the pearls and when I painted song of love she wasn't wearing, she's like one of my only pieces where she's not wearing any jewelry because I said, when you're singing about a song as deep as love, you need to be completely naked to the world, right? Wow. Because you're very vulnerable. So then I read something uh, like yesterday, um, a meaning for uh, in the tarot about the cards in the tarot that are nude. And it's all about taking off all of your armor, all the things that you wear so you can stand completely in your vulnerability and your truth. I painted one mermaid that was not nude for one for a particular reason, but mostly I always paint them nude because that's what I believe. I that they're willing to show their vulnerability. They don't need to wear any kind of armor you know like they're just vulnerable and and honest with the world and i like that and that's what we're trying to do you know i think that's something that we're trying to do is just um be be uh transparent in the world right absolutely no no you just see this open up a whole thing now i'm over here thinking about the whole adam and eve thing and everything i'm just like but there on the on the deeper level about that, the the ability to be vulnerable, right? Like yeah. I get it that this world makes you feel like you need an armor, right? Yeah. But, uh, it's about getting to that. And that's beautiful that you can express that in the paintings that in those moments when you're painting, you're vulnerable as the people that you're painting, right? As the mermaids that you're painting, you're just letting it flow, right? All your emotions are just like that's a good point. And that's, that's, that's a very good point. And that's also very true that in the process of painting, and I think a lot of painters can relate to this. Um, it's, it's definitely a time where everything flows. I mean, there've been lots of times when I've cried the whole time when I've been painting because it just brings up, it's like a, it's like a conversation that you have with your subconscious when you're painting. Absolutely, absolutely, and then, and if you think about it, how many people might be like, ah, maybe I shouldn't draw someone naked because you know I'm sure there are people that probably think, and that's probably people that haven't tapped into their like just a hundred percent raw artistry, right? Like to just really let it flow, because maybe thinking, oh, someone's gonna get insulted or this or that, or it's gonna maybe there's not gonna be as big a audience for it because it's over here naked and this and that or you know what I mean something like that so well and that's true like um I've had certain mermaid stores say to me oh no I can't carry your mermaids because they're nude mm. and then I say well real mermaids don't wear seashells <laughs> and have you seen that like in visions or stuff like that have you have they shown them to you like that like the with with oh, like just the mermaids that I paint, you mean, or no, no, like because you said like even when you you saw like a merman that was a protector of yours, right? That's what you. Oh said. yeah, he's my protector. Yeah. Yeah. So even like when you, I mean, obviously he was a male, but yeah, like when you have you seen like in my visions, the, yeah, yes, the yes. females, and they're always like just nude, there, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. So, I mean, that's then if that's how you see it. Yeah. So, you didn't see him like with the whole, uh, the sea. No. Cool <laughs> <laughs> no. So, so when I was in the desert, 
then the and I started meditating besides all the other kinds of things that I was trying then the the mermaids would start coming to me in my meditation or in my dream and I would see I would get the idea for what I wanted to do I did a couple of paintings of orishas and uh I would get the idea during that time and I would get the idea of the one that I wanted to paint and then how it was going to look will come to me in my meditation. Like my painting I did of Oshun, I saw her um, dancing around a fire in my meditation. And that's why in the painting, she has like a, um, a skirt that's kind of flying out. It's like strips of paper that are flying out because I saw her in my meditation dancing. And so, um, I research a little bit about them, like what is the color that they like and what are the things that they're drawn to. And this that painting was a trip because when I when I did the painting, I knew that that Oshun is about she's a goddess, a river goddess and about beauty and femininity. Mm -hmm. And so I painted her. I knew that she was attracted to peacocks and peacock feathers and, and femininity. So I, of course I painted her with pearls and she's holding a peacock feather and there's a peacock next to her in my painting. So I go ahead and I paint her and I post the painting. And then someone commented on my painting and they said, is that Josephine Baker? And I went, Josephine Baker? And I Googled Josephine Baker and she was very, a popular nightclub singer in Paris in the 1920s. And I've always felt a really strong connection to the 1920s and felt like I maybe lived during that time. And uh, she, Josephine Baker performed nude from the waist up. She wore pearls and she was attracted to peacock feathers. Er, and her face looked like the face in my painting. And I thought, that was so crazy because it felt to me like it connected with two different timelines. Like I felt like it connected to like a West African kind of timeline, but it also connected to like a Paris in the 1920s timeline mm. in the same painting. Wow. And that both timelines were somehow connected to me that I had maybe been there during that time. So do you, so do you feel that you were Josephine Baker or that? I don't know that I was Josephine Baker, but I think that I maybe observed her during that time, or I don't know, like, how do we, how do we know? We don't really know. We just know that certain things come up for us. I mean, that you know, like that, see, I've started thinking like that, but the truth is like, when I felt a connection to someone from the past, it just, I've gotten so many signs and I'm like, could I really have been this person? Because sometimes, yeah, when it's someone especially that's known and you're like, could I really have been like this person? And then, then I start thinking like, wow, what if maybe I just was there, right? Maybe I was just there like as someone observing. And so that's why I have that connection. But sometimes, yeah, I've gotten like, a lot of signs that it's like, what? Like, that is crazy. You know what I mean? So, I, mean, I do. Was, yeah, recently there was one that I was like. But, you know, I think I had been shown even since before, like when I was when before I really started acknowledging all this stuff, like when I was still a teenager, even I was already starting to get shown certain things of people that I believed I was or unless it's just like, you know, I think certain people have said like how we're really, you know, how we're really everybody, everybody, you know what I mean? Like yeah. on that level that, that maybe we just have access to everybody, right? Like, you know, like it, it, it's a big question that we don't really know right now, but, but I, I, in that same painting during that same time, a lot of things happened to me during that time in the desert i went and had a reiki session in sedona and all kind of, and and some pat kind of past life stuff started to come up for me and one of them was that i was in a slave ship 
And I could hear, I could see myself down below and I could hear the sound of the waves on the ship. And so then there's that combined with the vision that I had of the beautiful black woman dancing in front of the, she was nude dancing in front of the fire and she had this skirt that was flowing out and then, but wait, no, she's Josephine Baker, but wait, she's on a slave ship, but wait, she's Oshun. And it all kind of like wrapped up together into one painting that is whatever someone looks at it and sees, I guess, but it seemed to have multiple layers for me. Hmm. Absolutely. I wanted to ask you about that painting behind you on the right, because I've been drawn to it. Yeah. So what what what's the story with that painting? So that painting is called Reaching for Enlightenment. Mm. And it's it I started so I did that painting after I came back to LA. And it's been my hardest painting to paint. I've been working on it for a long time. And I think maybe because of the name, I don't know. Because I call it Reaching for Enlightenment. And the way I got the inspiration for that painting was actually about a story that I read um, in a in an oracle deck called the Yogic Path, and they were talking about a story between um, Parvati and Shiva, and in that particular story that they told, they said that um, Parvati was in love with Shiva, but Shiva was too busy working on himself and he just wasn't interested in her and she tried and tried to get his attention and she just couldn't he just wasn't interested mm. and so she decided to go off and work on herself and she just went off and worked on herself and she meditated and meditated and then one day he felt that energy and he came to her so that was the idea that came to me first when I did the painting. And so that's why I have the third, I don't know if you can see it, but there's yeah. a third eye at the top of the painting. Yeah, I've seen it. And she's just busy doing her own thing, working on herself. And then that's what comes up to her, you know? So it's kind of about that. So he was waiting for her to, to catch up. <laughs> I think he was. <laughs> that is so maybe so. Maybe so. Or maybe he needed to catch up. We don't know. <laughs> because the story was like the, the starting point for the painting. But then the painting takes on a story of its own. So it could be either one. Absolutely. But that's funny. That one, uh, I don't know. It, it, I like it. It resonates okay. for some reason, you know? Good, good. I'm glad. I love yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. I like it. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, well, I mean, while we're on the subject, what about the other one? I know you told me about it. It was at your uh, the event. If you want to talk about that one, the, the little the, the mermaid with the two, with the two. um The conversation with the mermaid. Is it, or which oh, one? Oh, this the, one. Yeah, the one with the two. Oh, you didn't have to, but yeah, sure. If... Yeah. So this is a little print of the original painting. And um, so I call that painting, I face my shadows with an open heart. Mm. And again, it's got the moon and all the phases of the moon. And, and so the painting to me with again I painted that painting after I came back from the desert and I knew that I still had a lot of shadow work that I wanted to be doing like the, there were still things that were triggering me and causing um, a reaction in me and I was like why is that why am I still reacting to certain things like and that's the work that we do the spiritual you know that's how we do our own healing work is by looking like using our triggers as a map to figure out where we need to be healing. So that painting is all about that. So I started doing the painting and um, 
while I was working on it here where I live, um, there was someone who came who was visiting. And as it turns out, um, I had wine. We sat down and had a glass of wine one day. And she told me, first of all, she had red curly hair, just like my painting mm. has red curly hair. And she told me about an episode that she had with her heart. And I was like, oh my God, because right now I'm painting a painting of a woman with red curly hair and it's all about her heart. I face my shadows with an open heart. And it seemed like such a coincidence to me that there was someone in the house who looked just like my painting. <laughs> so that was like one of those little strange coincidences in life that just makes you go, hmm. Yeah, you know, isn't that interesting? Yeah, I don't believe in coincidence. I have like the amount of synchronicities I have just on a daily basis. I even had a, a synchronicity with one of your paintings the day that I, and I told you about it. And I was just mind blown because, you know, it's just like how, you know, but I mean, I, I understand how it's all possible, but it's just it's still mind blowing as it much is. as it happens. Yeah, it's just everything. Um, Yeah, like I just had a ton of synchronicities the other every day like i probably there's not one day that i'm like it's just amazing right but i love um so that right so that's what i was going to ask you about about things about like when you painted things and yeah so i've had uh, another really really interesting experience that i had that i shared with you when you came to see my work is i did a painting called conversation with a mermaid mm -hmm. and i don't know if you can see it I, there's a little version of it up there but it's a, a vintage swimmer who encounters a mermaid. And when I painted the painting, um, it, it all came from just from a random idea. <clears throat> I was in Tucson and I, it was during that time and I, I was walking with a friend at Christmas time and we're walking down the sidewalk and there's like this little tiny piece of rubber swim cap laying on the ground, like a, a petal from a swim cap. And I picked it up and stuck it in my pocket. And I thought, oh, that reminds me. I really like those, that vintage look. Mm. Yeah, I think I'm going to use that in a painting. So then I decided that I was going to put a vintage swimmer in my painting. And then when I thought about that, what came to me was that she was kind of going to encounter, she's going to be out there in the ocean and she's going to encounter like a guide, like a mermaid guide. And so I decided to add um, as the mermaid, someone that I have painted before that I actually met at an event who made flower crowns and she's an actress and she's just like very, very beautiful, interesting person. And I decided that I wanted to make her the mermaid in my painting. Mm. So I was meditating. Um, there were three days that this happened where um, I had I was working on the painting and I had it down on the ground, like in front of me. And I would meditate in the morning and I would read my affirmations and then I would meditate. And I read my affirmations. And when I looked at the painting there, the painting like lit up between the mermaid and the swimmer, like they were having a conversation. And that that little section right between them lit up. And I had it on the floor and it was leaning against this um, leather recliner. And above in the back of the leather recliner, the leather head was like squished, like when you sit, you know, and you get up and the leather's all squishy, but it was squished in the shape of a third eye. And so my painting was lit up and there was a third eye above it. And I thought, this is really something. So I took a picture of it. And then the next day I had the same experience where I read my affirmations and I, the painting lit up and in my meditation, I got the message about um, your name is Ilona and your, your, your name is Ilona. And so I thought, my name is Alona, what the heck? So I Googled that and I looked and the name Ilona means to spread joy. Oh. 
to spread joy. And the name of the woman who's the mermaid in my painting, her name is Joy. Oh. <laughs> wow. I love that. Right? Yeah. So that was amazing to me. And the message was you're meant to spread joy with your work. And not only are you meant to spread joy, but there's joy in the painting. <laughs> you know? So that was one of those things where a little message comes through and you know it's for real because Ilona means joy and there's joy right there. Absolutely. See, and that's like what I'm telling you about. When I get those synchronicities, it's just so much. It's like at that point, it's not a coincidence anymore. It's like smack right in your face and it's like, okay, wow. So in those experiences, then it's like you're experiencing clear audience then, right? Like you're hearing something. <laughs> Yes, and I'll give you another example of it. This is another painting that I did while I was in the desert. And this one was the um, this one was the biggest Claire audience thing that I got. Um, for this particular painting that I did, it I got the message of what my painting was going to be, and it's my mermaid of the forest. And there is a story behind her too, but we'll we'll keep. We'll save that for another time, but it's just, it's my mermaid of the forest. So I get this message in my head that I'm going to paint this mermaid of the forest. And so I, the message is we're going to go to the art store and I'm like, okay. So I go to the art store and I literally like take my finger, like here are the paints and I put my finger and I run it along and they go like along the colors and they, and in my head, I hear like, no, 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 yes, no, yes, no, no. Like they chose the color palette for me wow. for the painting. Wow. And then I also used um, some art paper in the painting. They chose the art paper. And then I heard the message, like, we're going to go to this lake into, I was in uh, Green Valley at the time, which is just near Tucson. Mm. So on the way home, there's this lake that I liked to walk around, Silver Bell Lake, I think it is. So I, I hear like, okay, we're going to stop at Silver Bell Lake on the way back. We're going to walk around the lake and I'm going to show you the color of the water that you're going to use in the painting for, with the colors that we just bought. And we did. I went around the lake and like I heard like stop here. And there it was the color of the water and it was it corresponded to the colors of the paint that I bought to use in the painting wow. and then when I did the painting I swear to you it was like the painting was alive I swear I would sit there in this place where I stayed that overlooked like um the golf course it was it was a big open expansive area where I could watch the moon rise and I took that painting on the porch with me and put it in the other chair. And it was like a human was sitting there with me mm. watching the moon rise. It was like, an I'm, it was like, I was in another, I feel like I was in another place, another world, mm. another dimension. And that's why at some point I knew it was time to come back to LA and ground because I thought I could just like lose myself out here. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, I yeah, that's uh, I would love to go lose myself like in. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, it was really the most amazing experience. Someone that I I would go out and you know walk around there, and someone who was staying there told me that uh, it was heaven's waiting room, mm -hmm. and I believe that's true because it was so spiritual there, so like uh magical there it ma magical things happened while i was there because it's just like in the air you know this was in sedona you said this was actually in green valley arizona oh, which valley. is yeah 30 minutes south of tucson oh. but during that whole time i did spend time in tucson green valley and i also went to sedona Twice. And I had a very spiritual um, experience in Sedona too. And, and the first few times I've been to Sedona, like three or four times at least. And 
And when I had been to Sedona before that, I was kind of like, okay, I like it. It's very beautiful. It's so powerful, the, the rocks and everything. But I didn't have an experience where I could say, oh, yeah, you have to go to Sedona because, wow. But then I did. Mm. I did. So I believe that when you're in the right headspace and the right situation presents itself, Sedona is a great place to go to really go deeper. And in your experience in Sedona, were you taking any plant medicines or it just happened? Just Nothing. No, no. I've never taken any plant medicines. Oh, okay. No, believe it or not. No, no, no. That's, that's... Even though my paintings are talking to me, I haven't. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I think that's one of the reasons... Like a lot of times people would ask me that and the same, right? I see things without having to take anything. And uh, I think they did that on purpose for that reason, right? So people don't think, oh, you're just a loose and all oh, this or that or, you know what I mean? So I have yeah. that, that I could say that, right? I was yeah. going to tell you something else, but I forgot so immersed in that story you were saying about. Uh, so Green Valley is like this magical place then, right? Like It know, really it really, really is. I I am so grateful for the time I spent there. It was just what I needed. And and like I said, it was like this unique little pocket of time where I where I felt really free. I felt so free. I felt free to create. I felt I felt I didn't feel any pressure because there was nowhere to go. No one was going anywhere. There was nothing to do. And you know, again, it was about that that thing where they were instilling a lot of fear, like, oh, you can't go, you can't, you know, travel anywhere and you have to stay home and you can't do this and you can't do that. And it was a, if you were um, willing to step outside of that thinking, there were so many opportunities for growth during that time. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I keep forgetting what I'm going to say because I start listening to what you're saying and I'm like, <laughs> but that's good. That's actually good though. Um, No, you're inspiring me because, you know, today's a special day. It's like, I didn't even, I wasn't asked you, did you pick this day on purpose? Cause I, you know, we set up the interview and today's the spring equinox, right? <gasps> yeah. Yeah. So I was it like, wow. Is, oh, yeah, actually, I love that. No, I didn't. Oh, and also, I think I said it in the beginning, right? It's episode 88. So I thought it was funny about the 88, oh. right? Like something, uh, you know, and then on the spring equinox. And after this, I was thinking of taking a little break for the podcast. And maybe that, see, like doing this interview, I'm feeling like I want to, because I love like being creative, right? And I haven't really been, I did a few songs here and there over the past, but I love when that you're able to just, you know, go into that world and everything is just, you're somewhere else, right? So I haven't done something like that in a while. Even when I write, I mean, it just comes out, but I really feel like just letting something new come out, right? Something, uh, letting the creativity just go somewhere else where maybe I haven't taken it before. Yeah. So who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe I'll be able to, and you know, today, and maybe that's why the butterflies got my attention because, you know, it's all about new beginnings. I had posted a picture because also there was this butterfly in my backyard and it was just there for like hours, right? I was like, that's weird. And, you know, at first I thought it was dead or something, but no, it was still like it was eating or doing whatever it was doing. And and after like I was even able to like get it and it was on my hands and then it, it, it flew off and everything. But it was just there. And then finally it left, but it was there for hours and hours. And I was like, wow, like. That's never, I've never experienced that. Like when they come to my yeah. backyard, usually they'll stop real quick on a flower and then boom, take off. But I've never seen one even stay more than 10 minutes, five minutes, you know? Right. I was like, okay, wow. Like, like that's a huge, you know, sign from the universe, right? Like a whole. Right. Talking to you about transformation. Yeah. Maybe. But it felt, yeah. it felt complete. Like that's why I put it, like I, I posted a little picture on Instagram and I put like, you know, I put the stages right. There's four stages to the, to the butterfly, and then after, well, what's next? Like the spirit world, right? Like after that, it, it transitions. So I was like, huh. 
I'm like, what are you trying to tell me? Like, well, I don't know, maybe just, <laughs> just the next step, right? The next. Yeah. So like, if you think about that in terms of the tarot, I love the tarot. And um, I use the, I've been, for the last couple of years, I've been using the tarot as my own, uh, like a personal map for my own uh, personal growth. And so the tarot is 10, you know, 10 cards in a cycle. So the 10 is completion. So, you know, you like start out with the, with the ace and the two and, and with the seed of an idea. And then when you get to 10, it's about completion, but it doesn't mean completion. Like, oh, that's it. We're done now. We're going. Um, it means we've completed that cycle. But now we're going to start the next cycle. And what's that going to look like? Now we plant a new seed of inspiration and we we just put it in the ground. We go like, oh, I don't know. I just, I, I can entertain the idea that I have. Maybe I might like to do this. And you just like kind of plant, start planting the seeds for something new that will have its new cycle that'll take you to completion. Absolutely. No, and then I, for, I forgot to say, yes, on the 22nd, it's going to be the two-year anniversary of the podcast, right? But this is going to be oh. the last episode I'm doing before. I don't think I'm going to get another one in before the two-year anniversary, which is on the 22nd. So in three days, I'll probably yeah. post this one by, as we're doing it today on the spring equinox, I'll probably post it by tomorrow. You know, cool. not tonight, by tomorrow. And yeah. um, what do you call it? So it'll be the last episode and of the two years. And it's funny, wow. right? Two years. I exactly finished two years and it's going to be episode 88. So it's pretty interesting. Like just all the like. I love that. Yeah. I don't know why I think of the 88, like the two wings of the butterfly, right? Like, you know how it has like. Two oh. sections to it? So even that. Yeah. Right? And there was the butterfly. I know I over, but not, not that I overthink it. I just observe like every, every little like little things, right? Like they're all like, broom, like just, um. And I don't know, you're familiar with like the numerology too, right? I, yeah. So I was going to say, I also really, I'm fascinated by numbers. I love to see those kinds of synchronicities and numbers. Yeah. And I've been getting it nonstop. Like, you know, the five, five, five is all about like a change is coming, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. and the Coyote too is all about change. That's been the biggest, when I see the Coyote, a hundred percent, some change is coming. So the other day yeah. I was going to the mountains like for a bike ride and sure enough it's like wow oh, five six in the morning and on my way there like the five 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 kept coming out okay there's a car license plate five 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 there's something five 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 then there's even a race car that pulls up next to me and on the side of it is like a big old five 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 i was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like all right i got it a change is coming okay so <laughs> like, you know i mean usually it's i don't think it didn't feel like when it's a uh, unplay, it'd be like a bat will pop up or something crazier, right? Uh, but also, like, then I started the bike ride, and then right away, boom, a coyote pops up, right? And I was like, oh, wow. So it was all about change, right? Everything yeah. had to do with with change. So I don't know what change is coming. You know, I wanted to hit at least 100 episodes of the... <clears throat> That's funny, though, my throat, like... I don't know. Oh, you know what? <laughs> yeah. I was asking, maybe they're trying to remind me. No, because I have a deck right here. This is an Oracle deck. But I was like, you know, when you mentioned that, I was like, should I pull Let me actually pull a card and see what comes up. <gasps> do it, up. do it. Yeah. <laughs> I do it, do it. Yeah, no, but I didn't, I, I didn't want to. Anything else you want to talk about before? I definitely well, don't want you to not speak about anything that you wanted to speak about while we're here. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that about Oracle deck, because I would love to put my mermaids and merman on an Oracle deck that there've been. So there've been a few goals that I've had with these paintings that have come from my intuition. Um, I would love to, I, I do sell prints when I go to events and I really love selling prints of them because I would, I just like reaching a really large audience with them because I think that they have, you know, each one has a really special meaning. So I would, you know, love to sell prints to a large audience. And then I would love to put them on an Oracle deck. And I've been dragging my heels about writing about each piece. And so doing the podcast has really helped me start to put that in, put those wheels in motion where I start to like, look at what, if you were to pull that image on a card, 
what's the message that I would like for you to get from the card? Ah, oh. yeah, yeah. So are you going to start that or? Yes. There, I just said it to the universe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. I mean, I would love to create a deck, but I just, I'm not yeah. good at drawing, you know? <laughs> so. Well, not yet, but you, we don't know. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Or maybe it would have something else on it, uh, a, a lyric, you know, like, uh, I just saw that, like, you know, like, uh, one oh. tiny lyric, snippet of a ly song lyric with, like, little notes next to it or something. Yeah, wow. No, a card flew out. Let me get it. Right. <laughs> I mean, that thing just flew, flew out. Oh, wow. Out of all things, huh? What did we get? your your sacred your element and there's an eight in it too it's funny it says uh i don't know if you can see it water and affirmation i love that that's so funny huh right water and affirmation maybe oh what you just said about your um about creating my oracle card. deck yeah, yeah. there's uh, your affirmation uh, let me read what they put thanks omar yeah this is from the wisdom of the elders this is i had interviewed him sean leonard he goes oh, by yeah. That. Yeah, then. Oh, cool. Reading. Let me see 18 what it says right here. You want me to read it or? Yeah, read it, read it. Okay, let me try to read it. Like, okay, <laughs> affirmation. Water is the lifeblood of Mother Earth. It is sacred to indigenous people and is considered women's medicine. That is why it is so essential to care for the environment and in particular Mother Earth's waterways. It is naturally indispensable to all the plants, animals, and humans that share this world. About 60% of our body is made from water, and the intentions held within the very molecules of this fluid element hold on to energy. Studies have been conducted to analyze that the healing nature of water and its ability to store positive intentions. Speaking good words into the water we drink impacts its ability to nourish us and this has an even greater effect when the water is charged by the energy of the moon, sun, lightning storms, or collected from falling snow. Since we are made of water, it is important to be mindful of our own intentions and what kind of energy we store within our own body, and to speak kind words not only about others, but also about ourselves. If you have drawn this card, it may be a nudge from spirit to, the, to be mindful of your environmental impact to give thanks for mother earth and to care for the energetic waters that flow within your own body so that you may conduct yourself in a kind and loving way consider incorporating positive affirmations into your day or self-care practice remember your own power because how and what you speak to yourself will be held inside the energy of the water within you oh i love it interesting yeah, no, it was. A, it was it's deep. really and, good. Yeah, and it's funny because, well, I guess, yeah, like how it said about water being wo woman's medicine. So that makes sense that out of all things, like, you know, the water is like, it's always talked to you, right? Like, right. And I like the message about speaking kind words to the water because the water is within you and just, um, to remember to be kind to yourself mm. because that's that whole message of self-love, right? Which is so important. Self-love. I face my shadows with an open heart, you know, like learning to, um, to love the dark parts of myself, like the moon. And they talked about the water being charged by the moon and then our shadows, the dark parts of ourselves, loving those like, shining a light on those and loving those too because they're part of ourselves too loving all of us the good and the bad mm. that makes a lot of sense yeah that resonated with me a lot too um yeah well i won't, and then, I won't... go ahead go ahead you talk i was gonna say and then when you shine the light on the the dark parts of yourself you know and embrace them and say you know I see you and I love you. And then those, are, once you bring them out into the light, you can work on them, you know, but, but you can't just ignore them. So I, I think that that self-love thing really resonates. Well, let me ask you that since you mentioned that, have you ever 
painted something that was a little darker and and uh you just let it flow as well you didn't you know put any constraints on that you were like you know what i'm feeling this chaotic vision or something and you just let it flow to as a release or did you hold back mm. on that no i never have wow. i never have that's a good question right i really have to say probably not Oh, wow. And if I, when I've thought about that, when I've been kind of in a dark place or depressed or, you know, whatever, and I've thought, oh, I could express that in my art, I don't. Mm. For some reason, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Probably I've done that. Healing. I've done that with music, right? And I know it's like, I've like unleashed hell on certain songs, but they when i wanted to like ah, maybe i shouldn't they were like no re like let it out and sure enough it always resonates with somebody and it's sometimes i get it because sometimes if someone's going through that it may be the difference between the, them acting on something and just hearing it like okay someone else feels like i they understand my pain and somehow it helps just take it away right like just feeling right. like you're not alone in that chaos right so i've let it go like uh, on certain like i mean i pretty much always let it go but i don't i don't want to do it anymore i really don't like uh going forward i'm hoping even if there is chaos like i don't want to like do that anymore you know what i mean like, yeah i'm hoping at this stage of my life like that's you know i've i've I have released like for the last time where I was just like, you know what? Okay. Then let me just make sure I really get everything out. <laughs> right. Right. And then I did. And then I did. I said, well, however many F words I needed to say, however many <laughs> this and that. Like I just let it out what had to be let out, you know? But yeah. I asked, and they told me to let it out. They said, you better. It wasn't like a, like a, wow, well, you feel now they're like, well, you better like release that. Like it's, it's something you have to do, you know? Okay. Right, right, right. I, I guess maybe like with the, the way I express it is more like with the shadow painting, just for me, just even admitting, like, just saying out loud that you have shadows that you know, you have to look at. It's like admitting the fact that, you know, you have parts of yourself that are good and parts of yourself that are not so good, you know? So just, I, I know a lot of people really like that painting and and I think it's because so many people can resonate with the fact that um, you need to be brave to do that. So to me, that painting still comes from a dark place, like the dark place within ourselves that we need to look at, but it's not like dark, like I've never really done anything chaotic. It's always very st structured, but you know, I had a thought just now about when we were talking about this self-love thing and I, it, it's a thought about this painting. And I was, I was listening to something yesterday about the lover's card in the tarot deck and their take on the lover's card was that it was like the merging of, it was about self-love and the merging of the masculine and feminine within yourself. And it just hit me right now. I don't know when you were talking about the card and the water and the, and the, and I was like, wow, maybe that part is like, maybe that painting is about self-love and the merging of the masculine and feminine in yourself. That's beautiful. I love that. And I, I do too. I, no. And I, I, I tried to explain that to somebody not too long ago. I was having a conversation with someone. And I, well, since you mentioned it, because that is our, like the Gemini card, that is our card, the lover's card. So that's, oh, yeah, yeah. so, and, and I get that already, like about, you know, like, I, you know, we all have masculine and feminine energy and it's, you know, yeah, the balance, like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got into that whole talk and, and, and uh, you know, cause I think that, right. Even that, like. It doesn't mean to not be looking for uh like a maid or something like that, but when you get to a certain point in your life where you're good, like because you know you feel it's almost like that. Like I don't, I've never liked the idea of that, right? Like um, even though I've probably said it right when I was younger or stuff like that, or like 
almost like a looking for your better half or this or that or that that kind that kind of terminology that yeah you know, that's put into us since we're little yeah but it's more the idea of that being complete and then finding someone else that finished their journey and has become complete as well right that sounds more appealing to me than oh looking for my you know um, right because the work needs to start with yourself first because otherwise you just you know, wherever you go, there you are. You take yourself with you wherever you go. So it's all about doing the work inside to to um, love yourself and be the best person that you can be, and be really happy with what you're doing, and feel like what like people feel that you know, like if you're really happy with what you're doing, then people feel that, and it and it inspires them to maybe try to get you know, some of that for themselves to, and, and that's, that's the real, I think that's what the lover's card is really about. That's the real connection is love of self and completeness, you know? No, absolutely. And see, that's why, like, you know, like how it's the Gemini card, because, you know, that's why we're called the twins. So even earlier when you were talking about, <laughs> like talking to yourself, I was like, oh, like, <laughs> that's, I, I can a hundred percent relate to that because that's us, right? Like, you know, like even that, right? Like I've never, I've never dated a, a Gemini woman, right? But I, I met another Gemini. Oh, he actually, I think he had the same birthday as me. And then he was like, oh, no way. He's like, don't, he's, I imagine that's like, it's already like two of you. So it's like four people. Oh, he, <laughs> <laughs> like, and you don't know which one's going to come out. And it's like, so right. he's, he's like, no, nah, believe me. I, I thought the same thing. Like, oh, that, that would sound appealing, you know, like, oh, dating another Gemini. Cause yeah. Who would better understand us than us, right? Like, who would better understand a Gemini than another Gemini? Because, you know, like, yeah, it's sometimes it's hard to find people that truly understand, understand, like, the way your brain works, right? And then, um, yeah, so, but that, that was the warning. It's like, oh, yeah, no, <laughs> like, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Like, that's what, <laughs> what I was told. You know? <laughs> I think even from women Geminis, too, I think that I've heard that women Geminis that have dated you know, men, Gemini's that they, yeah. they were like, oh, yeah, no, that's too many, too many people <laughs> in one place yeah. at a time. You know, it's like <laughs> just, just uh, yeah, something like that. But I don't know, you know, not that. Of course, there's exceptions to every rule, right? Maybe, maybe uh, it just depends, right? Yeah, so, that's but true. Funny. But yeah, but we understand that whole concept of of that, right? Like the duality, especially. We're so known for the duality and so... The whole yin and yang. It's already like a yin and yang. That's like the whole the whole journey, like in our lives is all about like that, right? Like so there's always this thing, right? Like of of good and bad, yin and yang. You know, like there's all these different energies that 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 happen, you know. But not to yeah, whatever. Like um, that made me think of something. Um real quick. Yeah, when no, I was amazing. when I was in Sedona. Um, I actually went to, I, I was staying in Green Valley, but I took a little side trip to Sedona to meet up with someone who did a Reiki for me that I knew from New York. I mean, she lived in New York, but she was on a road trip passing through Sedona and I was staying in uh, Green Valley. This was during the pandemic. And so we met up in Sedona so she could do a Reiki for me. She had done a couple for me prior to that over Zoom. And so um, so anyway, we met up there and I was staying at an Airbnb and she came to my Airbnb to do the Reiki. And on the front porch, she parked in the driveway and she was walking up the, the sidewalk and there was a black dog and a white dog on the front porch wow. of the house where I was staying. And the lady who lived in the house came out and, and we were like, oh, those dogs are so cute. Are those your dogs? And she said, no. I've never seen those dogs before. I thought there were your dogs. Ah. And Rena said, no, I never saw those dogs before. I thought they were your dogs. Wow. And if they just like appeared, this little black dog and white dog, they were like the same size and the same kind of dog, but one was black, one was white, and we had no idea where they came from. Then later, after we did the Reiki, we went to dinner. And when we were driving um, down this alley to park the car, a white cat and a black cat 
were on the like in the alley by our car. And again, it was like that duality thing that happened right before the Reiki and right after the Reiki where these, it, that was such a strange thing. Where did they come from? Especially the ones on the front porch, the dogs, the black and white dog duality, where did they come from? So things just kind of happen, right? Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. <laughs> that make you go, hmm. <laughs> I love that because, yeah. Like I, also, I, I, for I, that Reiki, excuse me, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I remember one more thing. And when she came, the garage door was up. Normally, the garage door was down at this place where I stayed, but the garage door was up and there was a car in the garage and the bumper sticker said, let spirit drive. Mm. That's beautiful. Right after I, you had seen all that or? Right before we saw, so we, so we right before we saw the dogs we saw the let spirit drive mm. so and then we did the reiki which was another really powerful experience so in that time i really felt there were so many spiritual things going on no absolutely like that's right now but it always happens to me with the significant things right like there's even the eclipse coming up so it's like I already know. Well, yeah, I, I, I'm always in for it. Like any any big thing, like, you know, whether it's a super moon or this or that or in a spring equinox, a winter equinox, it never fails. That's why today, you know, I've never I don't think I've ever done an interview where I was just like leaning back. <laughs> and that's why it's funny even right now where you say like the whole let spirit drive, like I literally just feel like at this, I don't know what it what it is. Cause usually every I don't think I don't think I've ever done an interview where I was just leaning back like ever. <laughs> really? Yeah. So that's why I like, oh wow, okay. I don't that's know. Good. I don't, yeah, it's interesting. So that's why yeah. I don't mind like you you talking like by all means, like please uh yeah, anything that you wanted to share. Like, <laughs> um but yeah, no, no. I think um there's a lot of changes coming, definitely. And so how do you see See, like even even in my mind's eye, for some reason, I could see you painting. I could see you doing, like um, like a big painting. Is there any big painting that you've been wanting to do? Like something that 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 has been on your mind? Because I see like a big painting. I so that's interesting that you say that because I've been thinking that I want to paint big because yeah. I haven't painted really big for a while, except this piece. But this piece is on board it, and it's super heavy. I mean, carrying it around is a challenge. It's super heavy. So I was thinking, I really want to paint big again, but I think I'm going to do it on canvas. And yes, I, I mean, that has been foremost in my head recently is I want to paint again and I want to paint big. Mm. Because after the, the experiences that I had in the desert, when I came back to L.A., it was time to kind of start working again, doing events. Um, I did some traveling again in Mexico. And so I didn't really paint much. I painted, um, I faced my shadows with an open heart. I, I was working on and off on this painting, but mostly I wasn't painting. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like during that time, like my crown kind of closed up mm -hmm. because it was it was so open and so many things were going in and out. And it was so kind of crazy during that time, like in the spiritual sense, so much going on that I was kind of overwhelmed and I needed to kind of close it down and come back and ground in like reality, whatever reality is like the earth, you know, like back in society. Cause that's why we're here. We're on earth to be in society. That's why we came. So you have to come back at some point and like try to be a human. And so I did. But now I've really been feeling the call again to paint and it will be big. Yeah. No, because that's how I seen you. I seen you like with a ponytail and then this big, <laughs> <laughs> this big old canvas. And you're like, you know, I don't know, you're getting ready to paint. So. That's pretty interesting. Interesting. I like that, Omar. I I like I should definitely trust your intuition. 
So <laughs> that's good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. No, I'm anxious not to see what you end up painting. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I got to start meditating on that and see what comes through. I think it, it's just going to flow once you start. Yeah. It's just going to flow out. Yeah, yeah. I believe it's true. Easy. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, unless there's anything else you want to add, um, I really enjoyed this a lot. Like, I, thank you. I feel, Me too. I feel very peaceful for some reason. But I almost feel like, at first, even I thought like, oh, am I? Do I look too calm? Maybe I'm like way too, you know? Like I didn't want to seem like I'm not interested or something, right? Like I was like, no, oh. I never got that impression, and I like that because that. I like that you feel relaxed because that means the energy is good, right? So that makes me happy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. So how, how do you usually have any kind of uh, any rituals or anything that you do on full moon, spring equinoxes, winter equinox, anything like that? Or because today, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. That's so funny that we're speaking about duality because today, the spring equinox, there's equal amount of day and night. So that's. The two times in the right. year. Yeah, there's two times in the year when it's equal day and night. So it's it's uh the winter solstice, right? And the spring. Yes. Solstice. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Well, so the oh, I is it the winter solstice? The or? solstice and the equinox are different. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, today oh, it's wrong. not the equal it's, it's not, not the equal time thing today. The the winter solstice. And the winter solstice is the shortest day of the year. Oh. And the summer solstice is the longest day of the year. And the spring equinox, that might be the equal, you might be right about that, the equal time thing. I know that the the winter solstice is the shortest day of the year. Summer solstice is the longest day of the year. So, and so the solstice or the equinox is the first day of spring. No, it is equal. It, so it's 12 hours of of day, 12 hours. So the fall equinox and the spring equinox oh, is an equal. It's equal. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah. That's very cool then that we were talking about duality on the equinox. Yeah, I yeah. like that. Because it wasn't uh, like planned, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, there's, yeah. There's always something, some kind of synchronicity, something that. When I. Uh, when I was in, uh, last year, I traveled to Europe for, um, I was spent 40 days in Europe with a friend of mine who runs workshops in Europe. And I had the opportunity to work with her. And on the, the spring, um, not the equinox, the solstice, we did do, um, we did something there for the solstice. We were in Scotland and we did the place where we stayed. We lit all kinds of candles and we had all the guests come in and, and we did a special thing for the solstice. Oh, wow. So yeah, that was very, very cool. And I've done something for the winter solstice with like a women's art group before where we all dressed in white and we lit candles and that was really fun. Wow. So now if you got me thinking, I need to do some kind of ritual today. I'm going to yeah absolutely maybe you know I, I definitely want to go and you know give an offering and all that good stuff because uh you know i don't know if i realized that it was or i just did it all of a sudden realized that it was the the spring equinox today. i think yesterday when i was looking at at the thing i was like because on this computer calendar it doesn't say all that i don't think it says about like yeah i didn't know it was today either yeah so um that's so cool yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny because I'm just making sure to now I'm making sure there's nothing because I feel this weird energy like in my mouth and throat, like I'm supposed to say something, but I'm like, maybe it'll come after, but I'm like, what it what am I not saying or what do I need to say? Or I don't know if it's like a message, like how I was saying, like how everything's changed, like there's a lot of change coming. So I don't know if going forward there's something I'm gonna have to be saying or something like that, but it's so weird that. I'm feeling that energy for myself. And well, so, if it's a message for me, you're welcome to deliver it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, the only thing I saw was that, like the painting. So, so I think just that, maybe, maybe that, I don't think you needed to hear that, but maybe, I don't know, maybe just that, like a confirmation, like, 
exactly. Get, get yeah. you know, it's there already. It's already, it already happened. You just have to do it. Like it already happened. Like somewhere in the great scheme of the universe. Yeah. That's why I was able to see it because it already exists. So you already painted this thing that this yeah. massive thing that you're going to paint is just, you just got to do it. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. I will. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So I, I don't know. Hopefully that, that I'll, I'll I'll figure it out. Like if there is yeah. something, okay, I'll, I'll message you. Thank you for, okay. for giving me that, that opportunity then. But, yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah. I guess uh, on that note, and you, like you said, you um do have your paintings up for sale and all that as well. Right. So I do, I have a website. Um, I have a site on pixels, fine art America, where I sell prints of, you can see all the work that I've done and I sell prints. I do lots of events. I'm super active on Instagram. I love meeting like-minded people, especially now. This is some, this is, I, again, I'm so grateful for this opportunity because it's something that I've been wanting to talk about that, you know, happened, see now my throat's doing it. <laughs> oh, wow. Happened a few years ago, you know, where I really had that very deeply spiritual experience. And People that were close to me know, I told a few people, but I, I, you always wonder how it's going to be received. And I wasn't really sure if I was ready to talk about it, but lately I've realized that I am ready to talk about it. Like I did that interview on um, Bold Journey, which was a written interview last October. And that was one thing that I said was that I wanted to be on a podcast and talk about art and channeling because I think that it happens to a lot of artists and it would be a great conversation to have what about what people's experiences are with channeling. And then you appeared. <laughs> I love it. No, and uh, you see like this painting, this one was uh, a friend, right? They painted that and they were like, oh, like I painted the moon and right away you popped in my head. So I knew this was meant for you. You oh. know, I was actually born like less than it's like, I don't know, less than 24 hours from the full moon. So it was like, oh, yeah, wow. I was born on a, like, technically a full moon, right? Like, but it was like less than 24 hours from the full moon. So I'm not sure exactly how many hours, maybe like, so I consider it a full moon. Maybe that's why whenever there's a full moon, I always know something's always pulling at me. And then sure enough, when the night I look up and oh, it's a full moon, of course, that makes perfect sense why I feel this tug, right? So. And then wow. I don't know, see that one. Um, let me show you real quick. So that one, I had this dream once. I went to the ceremony, like after my brother passed away. I went to a ceremony and the oh, were you able to see it? Why it's like a yeah, see, yeah, yeah so, I can see. So, so I had had this um, I had had this um, fix now, nah, messed everything up. Huh? Okay, now nah, I had <laughs> had this like I went to the ceremony, right? It was after my brother passed away and it was like, even that whole adventure was like crazy. I drove like five, six hours. They told me last minute. I just, they're like, hey, and I felt like I was supposed to go. And even on my way there, I was like, oh man, because I was trying to rush to get there right before they started. And um, yeah, I was seeing so many signs on the way there. Like, okay, I'm meant to go and all this stuff. And um, so anyways, after this, it was my first peyote ceremony, right? But when I was about to take it, they were like, you don't need it. Like, they told me, don't take it. You don't need it. So I was like, all right, fine. So I didn't end up taking it. But then after I had this vision, and it was like me, like that, in the ceremony, just me and a medicine man. And then there was a, the fire in the middle, and then the phoenix rose. Like, the big old phoenix. And I was like, whoa. like Wow. Yeah, yeah. So that was the beginning. And it was. It was like, you know, a death and rebirth. Like, you know, obviously... Yeah. When my brother's passing, it was like every, my world came crumbling down, everything. But it was weird, you know, it was like everything happened at the same time. Like, you know, it was like all, everything, right? I think there was a steady job, like steady job that I had, like within the acting, right? I had I had got, you know, contracted to do this job that was paying really good. And it was within the acting. I was doing that for that stop, my brother thing. I had like a... I don't like saying it, but, you know, I, I guess I, I had like a kind of heartbreak. You know what I mean? Not kind yeah. of. I did. I, <laughs> it just. It, Full blown heartbreak. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like that. Right. It was like a 
all that, right? So it was like, it's like, I mean, but you know, after the, that's what it, it made it seem so like minor because it didn't compare to like what I what I felt when my brother passed, right? So it was like right. that's kind of what I, snapped me out of it. Like that thing, they just didn't matter anymore when in the great scheme of things, right? But it was right, like it was like the job heartbreak, and then boom, when my brother it was like everything. But then the phoenix rose and. You know, the whole story, then I, I looked into the Phoenix and that was just the beginning, right? Of burning every, like everything burns to ash and then it, it rises again, right? But okay, my whole point yeah. to that was just about the painting, right? Like a friend, I told my friend about that dream and somehow they painted it and I'm like, what? Like, wow. I was just, yeah, I was blown away like that they were able to see. Yeah. It, it speaks to me, right? I love it. Like, um, like, yeah. it, it, like how are you able to, like that, I was just like, wow, like, you know, it's amazing how we're all connected in some way. Cause, cause I love it. I would have never thought it could be painted any better to feel like what I felt when I, I had that vision. Right. Like, obviously when I saw it, like as real, right. Like the real Phoenix, the real medicine man right there, this and that, but that I love it. Cause it almost has that cave painting kind of look like there's like yeah. this cave painting type thing. And, and the little medicine man, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, right? I I love it. So yeah, so yeah. but that that I, I love I love people that paint so much and oh yeah, so after that, that's when I um like you know, even this friend, the one that paints, that's what I was trying to see. Like, have you been able to paint and channel something? And you're the first one that finally oh, you're the first one that finally it was like, okay, you did like confirm what I've always believed that that people when they're painting, they're channeling stuff, right? So that's what totally. I have to you know, I, or maybe everyone, they just aren't aware of it, but you're the first one that finally, like, you know, you're very aware of it and everything. So, yeah. So, so thank you for, for coming. Yeah. Out. You're welcome. I hope, I hope that uh, some people watch it who've had the same experience. It would be great to hear about other people's experience with channeling and painting. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, there was even this, you never seen this, Um, there was a show called Heroes. You never seen it? No. There's a guy that paints on there and he like, he paints the future, but it's like, obviously the bad guys want him because like he paints the future, right? So yeah, so they want to, but it's messed up. I think to paint the future, he has to be like drugged up. So it's like, okay. yeah, he, he goes into this trance and his eyes roll right. back and, and right, right, right. Some kind of altered state. Yeah. yeah. But it, it, it was yeah. a great show. It was called he Heroes and, um, I don't know if you ever get a chance to check out a couple of see if you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe if you look up like, oh, episode about the guy that paints or something, maybe because I don't think he was like in every episode. You know what I mean? So if you see that, I think since then, maybe you planted that seed for me. Like I was like, oh, people that paint like, yeah, maybe that may, you know, that makes sense. So, OK, mm -hmm. I know I'm over here mm -hmm. talking about whatever other <laughs> stuff, but, but yeah. <laughs> So no, I'll put all the links on uh to your website and also your okay. jewelry, right? You sell your jewelry as well, right? I do. I sell my jewelry online. I sell my jewelry at events. And I guess that's one last thing that I wanted to say about, and that's about the pearls. Um, there are two things that I wanted to say about pearls. And I think that it's why, well, actually three and why they show up in my work, um, in my art and also in the jewelry that I make. Um, Number one is, of course, they come from the ocean. They come from the water. But pearls are beauty formed from adversity. I love that. And also, just like last week, I discovered a song by Jimmy Buffett, and I put it on my Instagram post when I posted some pearls because I love this little part of his lyric um, where he talks about, um, in this world, most are oysters while some become pearls. Mm. And so I liked that because I, I equate that to like our spiritual journey, you know, like most are oysters, like everyone's here, but some become pearls. And I think that we become pearls when we do the inner work to become the best version of ourselves in this lifetime. So mm. I thought that was a, I thought that was a great lyric and it really helped me understand why I like pearls so much too. Wow. No. And it's funny. Cause I, I was going to ask you that last thing 
about pearls like what's the meaning like behind pearls and so that's yeah. yeah beauty yeah. formed from adversity i think you know where it starts as a little irritant <laughs> inside mm. and then i mean in nature anyway i mean pearls are cultured now but it's still something that's inserted inside of an oyster or a mussel that irritates them and so then the nacre the stuff that pearls are made of forms around it so it starts with like an irritant but and but then it becomes something beautiful mm. wow and precious yeah yeah that's amazing that's amazing i'll probably uh cut out that clip and like not cut it out but i mean get it and post it right now when you were talking about the pearl thing <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. No, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Jimmy awesome. Buffett. I'm trying to think of what that first line was. Something about in this world. Something about the world. Most are oysters, while well, some become pearls. I love that. That's very profound. It's really true. Yeah. And it takes the work, you know, to to become the pearl. It takes some work <laughs> because you have to, you know, you have Absolutely. to look at yourself. Um, I, I want to put a, I'll probably put that in the beginning of the, of the video when it's starting. Okay. Like that quote. But, um, yeah, if you can send me the pictures of the, of the paintings and I will, and I could put it as a slideshow, even in the beginning, I could put the pictures, okay. like a little slideshow, or I could put it at the end of the video. What do you think? Probably in the beginning. Cause I don't know if everybody watches all the way to the end, but that way. Exactly. Yeah. 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 They'll be able to see your paintings in the beginning. So. And okay. I, I think just for, I think YouTube, because even I see tarot readers, they'll block out whenever there's nudity, because I don't know what YouTube. Right. Is. I know. I wasn't sure what was going to happen with that, even with my paintings in the nah. background, but they're so like yeah, blurred out that. there. But no, I'll, I'll just send them to me, however, and then I'll just block block out okay. the, the nipples or whatever. Exactly. <laughs> right. No, so, yeah, yeah. So no worries. No worries. Just stop. Okay. But yeah, no, I love this. Uh, I enjoyed it so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Me Whenever too. Whenever you want to come back, we'll, we'll have a, you know, an update about what you're up to and all that good stuff or any other stories that maybe we didn't get to talk about. Yeah, there's always so much. There's lots to talk about. So that yeah. would be great. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Like, I already know, like, I could feel that you're going to be going through so many more things and, and opening yeah. up spiritually. So I'm. I'm very curious to see, you know, what other stories you're going to have. Yeah. Have you been, have you been visited by like star people and all that yet or no? No. Um, the, the close, okay. So the closest that I came, here we go. Here's another story. It's okay. It's okay. We'll end it after this one. No worries. Um, the closest thing that, that I would say was during my time when I was in Green Valley, I would wake up at like three o'clock in the morning. Every night I wake up at three o'clock in the morning and I would just start getting like all this stuff going through my head. And I was just writing it in a notebook, you know, like what was coming through. And there was um, some information about a star in Orion's belt that has um, a planet called, there was a planet called Mintaka, which was a water planet in the star, one of the stars in Orion's belt, and that they were like water people that inhabited this planet called Mintaka, but then the planet fell and the people, some of the people that were beings that were in Mintaka ended up in Atlantis. Mm. So that's just like a story I, that, I thought, oh, maybe I would say more about that at some point. But that was something that came through for me that was like star people related. I also um, had a guide come through to me that is an art guide that I believe is Pleiadian. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love the, yeah. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. but uh, I'm sure, I'm sure you're going to, you're gonna see them more, you know. So I think this is a step towards that happening. 
I've kind of held it at bay. Although, you know, I watch stuff every night. I, I read cards every morning. I have a real spiritual practice. I meditate every day and I ask them, my guides, you know, my spiritual beings to reveal themselves to me. And so far, no. <laughs> I mean, I mean they do but they don't you know yeah, what i mean exactly exactly yeah the truth is yeah maybe I mean, i'm not just, ready yeah just know it's like like think about it like if like they were right in front of you right now like you're probably gonna jump you know <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing that's so true and and again because i watch so many you know people um who talk about and people on your podcast too who talk about you know seeing beings in the room since they're little kids you too probably and so if that actually really happened to me because i told you when i was a little kid i always had the covers over my head because i was so afraid what's in the room what's in the room so maybe if they just appeared i would not be ready for that yet maybe it's like that yeah i mean you know it, it like yeah it, it still it still startles you i guess you know it just just whatever it, our human yeah mind, like, it's because it's easy to say i want that experience but then when that experience actually happens it's a whole different story right yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. But yeah, okay. On that note then. Yeah. On. Yeah, because if not, we're gonna keep on. Yeah. It, for I love it, but it's been, it's been great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, and so I'll put all the links and we'll do this again, hopefully soon. And yeah. On that thank note, you, yeah, Omar. It's oh, been thank you. super thank fun. You. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Likewise, likewise. Okay. Thank so you. I'll be waiting for you to send me the, yeah, I'm gonna... the photos and all that good stuff. Yeah, I'll do it now. Okay, we'll talk okay. to you. Okay, okay, bye. Okay, bye. Life may move fast, though we may move slow. I made a silly man who said he'd make it slow. We look about towards space, so we even at the sky. One day pass away, but never look inside. Breathe in, breathe out. Life is a man's move, figure the sound. I mean, you would be in line, got no doubt. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Feeling it, you know what I'm saying? Just feeling it. <laughs> and I want to feel this way forever. Yeah.